Hello and welcome back. Today we will take a look at styles in WX widgets. Styles can be used to change the appearance and behavior of controls and other classes. Let's begin. Here is our application from last time. The controls here all support different styles. We will apply some of these styles so you know how to do that and also to give you an idea about what is possible. Let's open mainframe.cpp. If we look at the button's constructor, we can see that it takes an optional style parameter of type long. Long is an integer type like int, but it is guaranteed to be at least 32 bits in size. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that style is just a number. So which numbers can we use here? Actually, you shouldn't use a number argument directly. Instead, you should use a predefined constant like wx bu left. wx bu left is a button style which left aligns the text label inside the button. Here is what our button looks like now. As you can see, the text label is now left aligned. To see which styles are supported by a given class, you can look at WX Widgets documentation. For example, here is the documentation for WX Button. If I scroll down a bit, you can see which styles this class supports. Note that some styles are only supported on certain platforms. WX BU Lift, for example, is only for Windows and GTK+. All right, let's apply a style to the checkbox. As you can see, this constructor also takes a style parameter. In fact, all the constructors for these controls do. By default, the checkbox has two states, checked and unchecked, as we have seen. Using styles, we can actually add a third undetermined state as well. To do that, we use the style wx check 3 state. But it doesn't look like anything has changed. That's because the undetermined state can only be set from code unless we also use another style called wx check allow third state for user. But how can we use two styles when the style parameter is just one number? To use multiple styles, you have to combine the constants using the binary OR operator. So if we want to use both wx check three state and wx check allow third state for user, we have to all them together like this. When we click on the checkbox now, there is also an undetermined state, which looks like this. Let's move on to WX static text. In the last video, I said that it's best just to use the default size for this control, but that's not always the case. First, I will give it a background color, which will make it easier to see what's going on. We will cover colors in a future episode. By looking at the background color, we can see that the size of the control matches the text width. If we make the controls width greater than the text width, and change its position as well, then it looks like this. By default, the text is left aligned within this space, but we can change that using styles. As an example, we can use WX align center horizontal to center the text. Let's apply a style to the text control as well. If you are creating an application where the user must type in a password, you can use the WXTE password style. Yeah. 
with this style, you cannot see the text and it cannot be copied either. For the slider, we will use the style WXSL value label. This will make the slider display its current value, which is super helpful for some applications. We cannot change much about the gauge, but let's make it vertical instead of horizontal. I will also change its position and size. Here is what it looks like now. WX Choice only supports one style, which will sort the entries in alphabetical order. Right now, our items are already in alphabetical order, so let's change that for demonstrational purposes. Now the order is item C, item A, item B. If we use the WXCB sort style, then they should be sorted in alphabetical order. And they are. For the spin control, we will turn on wrapping. Recall that the range here is from 0 to 100. If I now try to decrement 0, it will wrap to 100. Similarly, if I try to increment 100, it will wrap to 0. Let's move over to the list box. As you can see, I can only select a single item at a time. If we want multiple selection, it can be achieved using styles. We just have to use the WXLB multiple style. And now we can select multiple items. Our final control, the radio box, only supports two styles. For them to make sense, we have to talk about the major dim parameter. By default, this is the number of columns to use for the radio buttons. If we don't specify anything, it will just use the number of choices here. And that's why our buttons are currently laid out horizontally. Let's set major dim to 1 and change the position a little bit. Now we have one single column, so the buttons are laid out vertically. The two available styles just specify if major dim should be the number of columns or rows. So we can achieve the exact same result by setting the style to WXRA specify rows. And setting major dim to 3. Now we should get 3 rows which will look exactly the same as one column, because we only have three items. That's it for this video. I hope you now understand what styles are and how to apply them. See you next time.